Starting us off in our number 10 spot are the pyramids. Let me tell you right now, folks, that this one is just a theory with no real evidence to support it. But there are many people out there that believe one of the best pieces of evidence that we have to support the giant race is the pyramids in Egypt. Many don't believe the ancient Egyptians would have been able to build those amazing gigantic structures without the help of some sort. Some have suspected the help of aliens and others have suspected that there was help from the ancient giant race themselves. I mean, I am a huge alien guy, so any theory that goes against my aliens hurts my soul. But nevertheless, I guess I could let the giants get some love too. But also on a more serious note, many doctors spoke out against Elon Musk when he tweeted that the pyramids were built by aliens. One doctor made it quite clear that he wasn't giving the ancient Egyptians enough credit. So maybe this giant theory is the exact same. In the end, whoever built these things, whether it be the Egyptians, which it probably is, or giants, aliens, or Bob the Builder, good freaking job because you have stumped the human race for centuries. Coming in at our number 9 spot is an ancient cave painting found in the Sego Canyon in Utah. This piece of cave artwork is dated to be from 5000 BC, so she old. But on the right side of this piece, it is fairly safe to say that the artist drew 5 humans. On the left side, there is a large figure and what exactly that figure is, is up for debate. Some believe it to be a demon rising out of the ground, some others believe it to be a terrifying creature, or maybe it is a giant. No one really knows. The humans appear to be looking up at whatever it is, but the large creature doesn't appear to have any limbs, so I'm not really sure what this painting is depicting, but whatever it is, it is some type of gigantic being. Maybe it's a ghost of a giant. Coming in at number 8, we have Cyclops paintings. Throughout time, we have seen numerous paintings that not only depict giants, but also Cyclops. Now, what are Cyclops? Well, these guys are actually fabled and legendary creatures that were the size of giants, but only had one eye in the center of their forehead. There's been so many paintings and pieces of artwork throughout time that depict these humongous creatures that some believe there has to be some merit to it. Some depictions have the Cyclops also having a large horn that protrude out of its head, but I don't know how much more of that I can buy. If a skeleton of a large Cyclops were to be uncovered, then you would have my attention, but for now this is just a theory based off of all of these art pieces we haven't covered throughout time. Although, speaking of skeletons, coming in at number 7 we have the West Virginia Skeletons. Ever hear of Moundsville, West Virginia? Well if you haven't, you have now. Out near this town in West Virginia, archaeologists and researchers have been unearthing massive bones and skeletons since 1774. The first one occurred when a man by the name of Jack Parsons was walking along a flooded Cheat River and found a large bone protruding out of the ground. It was then that he pulled it out and believed it to be a femur bone, which is the one in your thigh and also is the hardest bone in your body. And if you break it, it hurts. But when we measured it up to a normal human femur, this bone was 7 inches longer. Now more bones were later found and based off the size of what Parsons and other researchers could find, they predicted that this human being that they found would have been about 8 feet tall. Other settlers found so many more giant bones that they eventually dubbed the town Giant Town. <laughs> Very creative. After that, more and more giants have been found in West Virginia and from from Moundsville to Giant Town to Wheeling. All of these are fantastic pieces, and even though they aren't Cyclops or 14 foot giant bones, they are still very impressive. Coming in at our number 6 spot is because the Greeks said so. Yeah, remember those Cyclops paintings I was telling you about? Well, most of them come from the Greeks throughout time. Giants were incredibly common throughout Greek culture, mythology, and history, but the Greeks often referred to these giant creatures as Cyclops, as I stated before. One of the most famous Cyclops being Polyphemus, who battled Odysseus in Book 9 of the Odyssey. The Greeks also believed that these giant creatures helped build some magnificent structures as well, just not over in Egypt. They believed that Cyclops were responsible for building the polygonal walls and stone work that make up most of the foundations of the Italian and Greek structures. So there's two parts of the world that are believed to have help from giants. Hmm, interesting. Coming in at number 5 and at our halfway point we have because Homer says so. You know Homer Simpson? No, no I'm just I'm just joshing you. I'm actually talking about the famous Greek epic poet who was born back in 750 BCE. Back in 400 BCE, Homer was quoted saying, on the earth there once were giants. There you have it. <laughs> Do you need any more proof? Yeah, of course you do, because I do too. This is just a quote from one piece of his work, but I will say that even he is speaking in past tense. So how much further back do we have to go to find the hard proof of these beings? If they ever did truly exist, the big 15 to 30 feet ones that we all dream of, then it must have been much before anyone we know existed. Coming in at number 4, we have the hillside footprint in South Africa. Near the town of Mapalutsi, located near the border of Swaziland, is the footprint of God. This 4 feet long footprint is in the side of a hill. It is believed to be anywhere from 
200 million to 3 billion years old based on the age of the granite that it is now lying in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why the hell would a giant stomp his foot in the side of a hill? Well, whatever or whomever left this print did leave it in the ground, but because of the age of the print, the tectonic plates were actually pushed together over time, making the footprint now on the side of the hill. There is even some small markings on the toes and heel of the print that make people believe it was in motion and scuffed the mud or ground as they were in mid stride. It is not an overly popular tourist attraction, but people have visited it from time to time, and some even leave coins in the heel of the print, maybe as a way to pay respect to those who came before us or maybe it's even a for good luck who knows but this is one piece of evidence that is actually pretty cool whether it is a giant print or not an insta pick alone is worth the trip Starting us off in our top three, at number three we have Hanuman's footprints. Have you ever heard of Hanuman? Well, now you have. Hanuman was the great devotee of Lord Rama mentioned in the Ramayana. While this ancient being may be long gone, evidence of his presence here on Earth is believed to be found just about everywhere in Asia, from Thailand to Sri Lanka to Malaysia, and especially in Lepakshi, Andhra Pradesh. Although in Lepakshi, many argue if it is Hanuman's footprint or the footprint of Mother Sita based off an Indian epic called Ramayana. While there is no real proof of any of these prints who or who is held accountable, many people believe them to be absolutely real. But why are there only a few footprints all around Asia, and not just the few that I have told you about? Well, it is said that Hanuman leapt from India to Sri Lanka and to other places, leaving his solo footprints everywhere. Dang! If he can jump that far with just one leap, I don't want to imagine what track and field day was like against that guy. Coming in at our number two spot, we have an ancient molar. So as I have stated a few times in this video, there is no real hard evidence. Evidence, hard evidence that there were ever giants on Earth, but there is hard evidence that there were humans that were bigger than us. That being said, humans are Homo sapiens, not Gigantopithecus black eye. The Gigantopithecus black eye were actually our ape-like ancestors that came before us sapiens. These might be just the largest humanoids to ever have actually existed. Well proven to actually exist. Lucky for all of us, we don't just have proof, we have teeth. That's right, we have a molar of one of the large beings and let me tell you that that better not be a baby tooth because it is huge. And finally coming in at our number one spot and if you ask me the coolest one on this list, we have a massive giant sword. Hugh Newman, the co-author of Giants on Record, America's Hidden History, Secrets in the Mounds and the Smithsonian Files, is a firm believer in the existence of the ancient giant race. He has traveled the world studying the different ancient civilizations and evidence that leads others to believe their existence. One that is rather interesting is the subspecies of Homo sapiens that existed in Siberia around 50 to 300,000 years ago. They were called the Denisovans because they were found in the Denisova cave. They were believed to have roamed far and wide all the way to North America, so that's pretty cool. But let's get back to the sword. Newman has a picture online of him next to a 15th century giant sword found in Scotland. I just want to know, who the hell was using this thing? How could you use this thing unless you were an absolute monster? I mean, I don't know if this counts as a real piece of evidence because maybe it was just more for decoration or a ceremonial thing but dang I mean you know what 20 bucks to whoever can properly wield that thing I'm serious Starting us off at number 10, we have Kazam, otherwise known as Shaquille O'Neal. For any of you who have seen that movie, man, oh man, I rewatched it recently and I do not think it holds up. But if there are Kazam fans watching, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Anyway, back to Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal was born March 6, 1972, and little did his mother know, she would be giving birth to one of the most famous basketball players of all time, as well as a modern giant. Shaq clocks in at 7 feet 1 inch, which is 2.16 meters in height, and has quite the list of hilarious pictures comparing his size to other popular celebrities. One of my favorites is a picture of him with A-list comedian Kevin Hart. We all know Kevin is a shorter guy, but next to Shaq, he looks like a tiny villager. Luckily for Kevin, Shaq is just one large friendly giant unless he's on the court. Shaq no longer plays basketball, but is now a sports analyst on NBA related TV shows, and even though nowadays he's usually seen just sitting at a desk, this man is still a giant. At number 9 we have Anna Haining Bates. Born in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia back in August of 1847. Anna was just like every other child until she started a bit of a growth spurt. A growth spurt that never ended. By age 5, she was already 4 feet 8 inches. That's 142 centimeters. And weighed over 100 pounds. That's over 45 kilograms. Finally, at age 22, she came in at 7 feet 6 inches. That's 229 centimeters and weighed 350 pounds, which is 159 kilograms. Bates went into show business around the age of 16 and would often be shown opposite to a little person to show the incredible difference 
difference in size. But being that tall has its disadvantages. In July of 1865, Anna almost burned to death during a fire at the famous P.T. Barnum Museum. The stairs were engulfed in flames and she was too tall to jump out the window. Luckily for her, she was saved by other museum employees who broke through walls to escort her out and was then assisted with a crane. That's crazy. It's hard enough sometimes getting emergency crews to the scene, let alone a crane. But hey, I'm guessing they didn't have the same kind of Toronto traffic as we do nowadays. Anna then later went on to marry another giant by the name of Martin Van Buren, aka the Kentucky Giant, who was 7 feet 3 inches tall. She later got pregnant with two children, but they both tragically died at birth. Anna herself later died in 1888 at the age of 41. At number 8, we are going back to the NBA with a basketball superstar, Yao Ming. This famous NBA superstar was born September 12, 1980 in Shanghai, China. Yao Ming's height is an incredible 7 feet 6 inches or 229 centimeters. This giant featherless being has a wingspan of 226 centimeters, which is basically just as tall as he is, and his feet are size 18. Those aren't shoes, those are freaking water skis. Before coming to play for the NBA, he played for the Shanghai Sharks in the Chinese Basketball Association, and was then drafted to the NBA in 2002 to the Houston Rockets, where he there played until 2011. In February of 2017, Ming was elected as the chairman of the Chinese Basketball Association. Now, there is also a documentary titled The Year of Yao, filmed during his rookie year with the Rockets, as well as a book he co-wrote with NBA analyst Rick Butcher, titled Yao, A Life in Two Worlds. So if you want to get to know him a little bit more, check those out. If you want to see how this giant dominated the court, I'm sure you can find tons of old Rocket games all over the internet. At number 7, staying in China, but going back to the 1840s, we have Chang Yu Sing. Sing grew up to be 7 feet 9 inches tall, which is 236 centimeters, and was appointed as a member of the Emperor's Court. Later on in his life, he left China for England on what was only supposed to be a brief visit, but that brief visit ended up turning out to be a two-year stay. During his stay in England, many people would stop him and pay three shillings just to see him. Later on, taking advantage of the extra cash, he went on tour through the rest of Europe and was shown off alongside another little person just like Anna Haining Bates. He later also joined P.T. Barnum Circus and was also known to have many female admirers. By the sounds of it though, none of them lasted because I could not find any info on whether he was actually ever married. Maybe he just liked the bachelor life too much. <laughs> I get it. Anyway, Chang Yu Sing later passed away in 1893 and his funeral was only attended by 50 of his closest friends due to his own wishes. His coffin was 8 feet 5 inches long, that's 260 centimeters, and I don't want to imagine what it was like being one of those pallbearers. If I was one of them, I probably would have let him down. At number 6, we have Patrick Cotter O'Brien. Patrick was born in Kinsale, Ireland on January 19th, 1760. He grew up to be 8 feet 1 inch tall, which is 244 centimeters, and he was the first of 13 known people to grow past 244 centimeters. At the age of 18, he worked as a bricklayer. Needless to say, unlike the rest of his bricklaying colleagues, he did not need a ladder to reach the top of the cottages that they were working on. After he had enough of bricklaying, just like the most of the other giants on my list, he went into show business where he later went just by the name of O'Brien. He traveled around in a specially made carriage and apparently he was once stopped by a highwayman who when seeing the giant O'Brien inside, immediately ran away with his tail between his legs. His massive weight took quite the toll on his body which brought him to his death on September 8th, 1806 at the age of 46. I'm sure his weight caused him many troubles and struggles but I bet it wasn't easy for the horses pulling him in the carriage either. That being said, the more horses, the easier it is to pull an 8 foot tall giant. That's the old saying, right? Coming in at our halfway point at number 5, we have another Canadian, Joseph Edward Beaupre. Joseph was born in Willowbunch, Saskatchewan on January 9th, 1881. His parents were what was considered average height and honestly so was he until the age of 3 and he started growing like crazy. By the age of 9, he outgrew his own parents and he was 6 and a half feet tall. At the age of 17, he was so big that it is reported that he lifted an 800 pound horse. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, then that means he was not only tall, this guy was yoked too. He reached his full giant potential at the age of 23 at 8 feet 3 inches. That's 251 centimeters. He had to wear giant custom made shoes that were size 22. If Yao Ming's shoes are water skis, then these are freaking snowboards for each foot. He had dreams of becoming a cowboy, but gave up because his feet would still touch the ground while atop his bucking bronco. He later joined a circus as well as hoping to capitalize on his size, but it took its toll on him, especially because he suffered from tuberculosis. He sadly died on July 3rd at the age of 23. Now, this story gets pretty sad. After his death, the circus refused to help his father pay for the burial, so his body stayed with the undertakers, who then started displaying his corpse in store windows and museums. In 1907, his corpse was found in an old circus hangar and was then given to Montreal University, where it was mummified and stored. In 1970, Ovilla Lesperance, descendant of Joseph, requested her relative's body back, but was at first denied because the university didn't want his body stolen and put up for display again. Finally, Ovilla 
Villa got her relative's body back and Joseph was cremated in September of 1989, 85 years after his death. Even though his circus employers and maybe the Montreal University people are now deceased, I still have one thing to say to you. Screw you guys. At number 4 we have Arthur Cayley. Arthur Cayley was born in Solby Isle of Man in 1824 and was considered a normal sized human being until his late teens when he started growing much much taller. Maybe it was an after effect of puberty. He reached 7 feet 11 inches tall which equals to 241 centimeters. He weighed over 392 pounds which is 178 kilograms. His size earned him the name Manx Giant and he was known to be a bit more wide than his other giant friends as well. He was frequently seen in exhibits in Manchester, London and Paris before suddenly and mysteriously disappearing. His mother reported that he was dead but many doubted this because his life had been insured for 2,000 pounds only a few weeks prior. They believe it was a case of insurance fraud and that a tree was actually buried in his place. Sure enough, Cayley was not actually dead. He traveled also to join P.T. Barnum's circus and he was known as Colonel Ruth Goshen, the Arabian Giant. His former life as the Manx Giant stayed a well kept secret until his death in 1889. At number 3 we have Angus McCaskill. Angus was born on the island of Bernay in Scotland back in 1825. The Guinness World Record books recognize him as the tallest true giant to have ever lived because his height was not caused by any kind of growth abnormality. Funnily enough, he was so small at birth that doctors didn't believe that he would survive. Now, Angus only grew to 7 feet 9 inches or 236 centimeters, which may not seem like much after a few of our friends on the list here, but trust me when I say this guy was still absolutely massive. He had the biggest chest ever, coming in at 203 centimeters or 80 inches around. He weighed in at 500 pounds. That's 227 kilograms in case you wanted to know. Oh, and by the way, he could lift a 2800 pound ship's anchor. He was also known to carry a 100 pound weight, which is 45 kilograms, for 10 minutes using only two fingers. Angus often received requests from people wanting to wrestle him. Those challengers didn't have the same size as Angus, they most certainly had guts. He then of course later joined the circus and toured through Cuba and the East Indies until going to Europe and North America. After retiring from the circus, he went into real estate and opened up his own store. Sadly, in 18 1963, he died from brain fever. Can you imagine rolling up to a house and seeing this guy out front? The outside is perfect and beautiful, but I don't know a damn clue what it looks like on the inside. Can you let me know? At number two, we have Bernard Coyne, aka Bernard the Giant. Original name, huh? Bernard was born in Anthon, Iowa on July 27th, 1897. His actual height is cause for dispute because some report him being 8 foot 2 inches, while others say he was 8 foot 4 inches, while even more people saying that he was 8 feet 8 inches. No matter what though, he was over 8 feet, which is over 20 240 centimeters tall. He was so tall that he was actually rejected by the army, probably because they could see him coming from miles away and that they were too scared that his rations would need to be three times the size of anyone else's. Unlike most other giant people whose height is a result of abnormalities in the pituitary gland, Bernard's height was from the unicoidal infantile gigantism, a very rare syndrome. His parents would put him on display for extra money when he was younger, but later decided against it because they didn't want to be on the receiving end of the wrath of God. <laughs> Good idea, jerks. Bernard preferred a quiet life and turned down countless offers to go on exhibit ever again. His shoes were a size 24 which means they're considered something I don't know bigger than a snowboard and he weighed in at 300 pounds which is 136 kilograms. He sadly passed away at the age of 23. Man, being put on display for a couple of extra bucks by your parents. <laughs> Too bad child services were not around yet. And finally coming in at our number one spot, if you ever visited Clifton Hill on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, you'll know this guy. Robert Wadlow. Robert was born on February 22nd, 1918 at a normal size. However, he quickly started growing at the age of 5 and he was already wearing clothes intended for teenagers. At age 8, he was taller than his 5 foot 11 inch father and could even carry him up the stairs. He then joined the Boy Scouts at age 13 and had to have his own uniform, tent and sleeping bag specially made for him. In 1936, he joined the Ringling Brothers Circus as a curiosity. He had a huge appetite and ate around 8,000 calories a day. In case you're wondering, the average human eats 2,000 to 2,400 calories a day. Damn, that guy can eat. He unfortunately suffered from some leg issues and had to wear leg braces and also often use a cane. But nevertheless, he kept growing. Sadly, one day, one leg brace was fitted improperly and ended up causing him a huge blister on his ankle, which then became infected. Tragically, the infection killed him at the age of 22 on July 15th, 1940. He was last measured June 27th, 1940 at 8 feet 11 inches, which is 272 centimeters. He was a true giant and not only was he actually missed, but so is his Niagara Falls statue. 
statue at the Guinness Book of Records Museum. I remember countless trips where I actually measured myself up against him and that was a lot of fun. Miss you Robbie. Uh, coming in at number 10, there have been bigger babies but this is one of the biggest ever naturally delivered babies, so the traditional way rather than out the sunroof. British mum Maxine Marlin delivered a 13 pound 7 ounce Maria in 2013, so that's 6.1 kilos. She was one week overdue and Maxine was expecting her to be big but not that big. Next up we have Germany's biggest baby at number 9. Jasleen was born naturally in 2013 and also weighed in at 13 pounds and 7 ounces. She was 57 and a half centimeters long too, making her look like a giant baby. Her weight made her the heaviest German child to ever be delivered naturally. Jasleen's mother suffered from an undiagnosed case of gestational diabetes, which is the reason for her daughter's abnormally rapid growth. Oh, hello there, number eight. We have China's biggest baby. A mother in China gave birth to a 14.8 pound baby, so that's 6.7 kilos, double the average weight for a baby in that country. The baby was nicknamed Kang Kang by his dad, which means healthy. His actual name has not been disclosed by the family for his protection. Kang was born via his Caesarean section, which thank goodness because wow, he's big. Not only was Kang heavy, he was very long. A real giant at 58 centimeters long, he was also double the height of a usual Chinese born baby. Meet officially the biggest baby ever delivered naturally at number seven. We have George King. Jade Packer was 21 years old in 2013 when she delivered a 15 pound and seven ounce baby, so that's just over seven kilos. Jade struggled during the delivery and George almost didn't make it. Luckily, he did, and he's the biggest baby ever to be born naturally. He was 15 days late, which goes some way to explaining why he was so big at birth. It is amazing that we live in a world where George and his mum could be saved. Just 50 or so years ago, it probably wouldn't have been possible. Coming in at number six, we have Australia's largest baby. Meet Stephen Little, who has a very ironic surname considering his birth weight. Stephen was born on January the 26th, 1963, incidentally Australia Day. He's going to celebrate his 58th birthday in a few weeks, so if you're watching, happy birthday Stephen. Stephen's mother Josephine, however, didn't have the happiest of birthdays. She too also suffered from gestational diabetes while carrying him. Born a week early, he was a whopping 16 pounds and 2 ounces, so 7.31 kilos. Despite being a big whopper of a baby and having to wear clothes for a 2 year old when he was a newborn, he's now just over 6 foot with a normal weight of 97 kilos. A more recent 16 pound baby, this time in Texas. Meet the Lone Star's biggest ever newborn at number 5. Everything is bigger in Texas, including their newborns. Jermichael Brown was born in 2011, weighing 16 pounds and 1 ounce. That is more than double the American average. Jermichael. What a name. He was delivered a few days early by C section as he was simply just getting too large. Jermichael was so big, he was dubbed Moose by his parents. Coming in at number four, we have big old baby Nadia. Tatiana Kalina was 43 when she delivered a 17 pound and 5 ounce baby, so nearly 8 kilos. Baby Nadia is thought to be the biggest baby in Russia and had to spend a whole month in hospital before being allowed home to her family. I like the picture of her on the baby scale, she doesn't even fit. It's kind of cute. Tatiana said her husband just stood there blinking when he saw his giant daughter for the first time. Coming in at number three, make room for the 19 pound baby. Akbar Rashudin tipped the scales at 19 pounds and two ounces, so 8.7 kilos. Akbar, which means the great in Arabic, was delivered after a 40 minute C section. The ginormous baby drew a big crowd in Indonesia where he was born. People were flocking to get a peek at the large baby boy. His his growth was thought to be as a result of extra glucose from his mother in the womb. His father told the press that Akbar was feeding constantly. His poor mum. At number two, we have the biggest baby ever born and survived. Born in 1955, not much is known about the baby boy born to Carmelina Fideli in Italy. What we do know is that he weighed 22 pounds and 8 ounces, so 10 kilos. A 10 kilo baby. I mean, can you even imagine? Annoyingly, there aren't really any pictures, but those who saw the boy, who would be in his 60s today, say that he was absolutely gigantic. Get ready at number one. This 10 month old is 41 pounds. 
Alaya Salim was born a hearty 9 pounds, but that's nothing compared to a lot of babies on this list. However, after birth, Alaya started rapidly gaining weight. Aged 10 months, she became the size of an average 6 year old. 41 pounds is 18 and a half kilos. An 18 and a half kilo 10 month old baby. The problem is, the baby is of course unable to walk, but actually, her mother is really struggling to carry her. She's a giant baby. All right, starting this off at number 10, we have Brakim Takiula. Now, he's actually joint 10th alongside a guy called Morteza, but I could only choose one to be at number 10, I'm afraid. So, sorry, Morteza, you're still pretty tall though. Born in 1982, Brahim is from Morocco and stands at 8 foot 1. He underwent treatment in Paris in 2006 to help treat the tumor that was causing his unstoppable growth. Now, thankfully, it worked, and the growth hormones in his blood returned to a normal level. Despite this, though, Brahim is still famous for apparently having the largest feet on the planet at 15 inches and he actually has specially designed shoes to help support his weight. Alright next up for our number 9 now we have Bernard Coyne. Now he was born in 1897 in Iowa and when he was conscripted into the US Army during World War 1 he was measured at being 8 foot 2 inches tall. Bernard had something called daddy long leg syndrome which involves his body totally ignoring the release of estrogen that's telling him to stop growing. Bernard died at the age of just 23 from a glandular disorder that left him with a hardening liver. At this point, some reports even put his height closer to 8 foot 4. Alright, next up at number 8 we have Don Kohler. Born in 1925, Don was of normal height until he shot up at 10 years old and eventually reached 8 foot 2 inches tall. Now, if any of you guys watching this remember the 1970s, you might remember Don as the tallest person in the world at that time. What's interesting about him is that he actually had a twin sister who didn't share his extraordinary height. She remained at 5 foot 9 inches tall, which meant the two held a world record for the biggest difference in height between two twins at 29 inches. Moving on to number 7. Now we have Vikas Upal from India, who was born in 1986. Although he was never officially measured by Guinness World Records, there have been a number of other organizations that confirmed his height was 8 foot 3 inches, making him the tallest man in India. Over the years, there were a number of publications that put his height all the way up to 8 foot 10, which would have put him at the number 2 spot on this list, but most people think that's a bit of an exaggeration. He had huge proportions. His hands were actually said to be 13 inches long and his feet 19 inches, but he did appear to be totally in proportion. Sadly though, Vikas died in 2007 after a failed brain tumour operation. Ok, for our number 6 now guys, we have Sultan Kosen. Born in 1982 in Turkey, Sultan is currently the tallest man in the world, standing at 8 foot and 3 inches. Here's a picture of him with the shortest man in the world at that time. Look at the difference. Like others on this list, he actually had a normal childhood until the age of 10, at which point he rocketed over 6 foot tall. His growth was caused by a tumour in his brain and it showed no signs of stopping into adulthood. In 2010, doctors attempted to remove the tumour by focusing radiation at it and amazingly, it worked. It was a success. As of 2012, Sultan has officially stopped growing, but nobody seems to be taller than him yet. Alright, coming in at number 5 now, we have Edouard Beaupré. Born in 1881, Edouard is the tallest Canadian on this list and stood at 8 foot 3 inches tall. He was the oldest of 20 children, yes, 20. At age 9, he was 6 foot 1, that's the same height as me. But it wasn't just his height that made him remarkable, Edouard was also an impressive strongman. At the age of just 17, he reportedly lifted up an 800 pound horse. He also spoke French, English and 3 Native American languages. He spent the next 6 years touring with a circus before dying from a pituitary gland tumour at the age of 23. Alright, moving on to our number 4 now, we've got Vaina Mylyrin. He was from Finland and was once the world's tallest living person. Interestingly, he was also the tallest soldier of all time as he was part of the Finnish Defence Forces. On multiple occasions throughout his 20s, he was measured at being 7 foot 3 inches tall, but interestingly, Vaina actually underwent a growth spurt in his late 30s and shot up over a foot to 8 foot 3 inches tall. Now if that wasn't impressive enough, he also apparently had huge hands that spanned the size of a bowling pin. What? Alright, coming in at number 3 now, we have John F. 
Carol. This is an interesting one because John's case has been disputed over the years. He was born in 1932 and by age 27 he was measured at exactly 8 foot but John had a severely disfigured spine and without it apparently he would have been 8 foot 7 and 3 quarter inches. Born in Buffalo, New York he became known as the Buffalo Giant after a growth spurt saw him grow 7 inches in just a few months. He was diagnosed with giantism and although doctors trying to treat his spine condition it did get worse and John had actually shrunk 4 inches by the time he passed away at the age of 37. Ok next up at number 2 now we have John Rogan at 8 foot 9 inches. John was born in Tennessee in 1865 and was apparently a normal size up until the age of 13. Then he underwent a massive growth spurt that left him needing crutches to even stand up. By age 17 he couldn't walk at all. Unable to work for a living John would stand at the train station and sell portraits of himself to curious tourists. He was said to always be friendly and easy going. Although everybody knew he was probably the tallest man alive at that time, he wasn't officially measured until his death in 1905 and was buried under concrete to stop curious scientists from trying to study him. Alright and finally at number 1 we have the tallest human of all time Robert Wadlow. Robert is the tallest confirmed living human of all time standing at 8 foot and 11 inches just 1 inch shy of 9 foot. His extraordinary height was caused by hypertrophy of the pituitary gland which resulted in his body producing way too many growth hormones. Robert was born in Illinois in 1918 at the age of 5 he was already wearing clothes meant for 17 year olds. The following year he actually outgrew his own parents and by that time he was 8 years old he stood at 6 foot 2 that's actually an inch taller than I am now. Now sadly Robert died due to an infection from a leg brace at the age of 22 and it took 12 pallbearers to carry his coffin. <laughs> 